Hello everybody, welcome to the artclasses.com Patreon paint over. So usually every term or every 15 days I will select uh, an artwork that my patrons post on my Patreon page on the community and I will uh, paint over them and see what uh, you can improve on and hopefully this video will be helpful to um, the artist and everyone if you are watching so um, if you're my patron you know at, at all level you can post your artwork and then I'll randomly just select them so in this one I'm just gonna do a pretty simple portrait so this is what he posed um, you could use you could benefit a, a, a lot more from um, by controlling lighting and um, your value it's everywhere so it's like this one is 96 97 right and this is uh, 38 so here you gradually have from the top to like way down to the sort of pretty dark so the the value range is too well way too high and then you have this which is like almost 10 so usually uh, it's you probably benefit better if you control your value a little bit then you know well, a lot more um, just try to Um, get it cl in the closer range like if you look at it here why is it not okay the value that I paint from the face uh, front of the face to the side of the face is pretty much 85 to about 74 so that's pretty small change um, 84 to you know it's on the same similar plane so the value are pretty similar except the highlight and then on the size like 72 so the value is pretty close except on the occlusion shadow or the part that are not the skin itself if it's the skin itself occlusion shadow mine's still not that far it's about 60 50 something right so try to limit your paint into and I pick the palette that you have um, and when you that's the palette right so I kind of pick it but I make it three so try to distribute your value on the plane evenly I'll explain the plane in a little bit and then try to distribute like on if it's on the same plane the value should be closer to each other and then if you're on a different plane you shouldn't change that much but anyways alright so um, in this one I'm, tr I'm kind of going a little bit um, toward a more typical a uh, little more realistic basically you can paint in this I can you know you can select to be a stylized but the rule of the painting are the same um, basically you know if you look at the value here is 83 78 right it's 91 80 something 80 91 so it's not that far apart with the exception of the extra lighting that's coming in so um, I decided to go a little more realistic because it's easier <laughs> for me anyways uh, if I'm going stylized I'm not sure which style you're going for but basically I just use the same base that you have so I just go over that and uh, I didn't make the eyebrows blue because um, I never seen the blue eyebrows so it's very hard for me to kind of imagine what would blue eyebrows would look like but the blue hair I've seen so it's not that bad and um, I only have 30 minutes so it's not a masterpiece it's not gonna be as pretty but it gets right to the point um, so uh, all right and these two are uh, this one is already on Gumroad this one is so you can go download it on my Gumroad this one's on Patreon it will be released next week which is the end of March and if you are really interested in digital painting whether you want you're doing it for uh, pleasure or you know like hobby or you want to you know get really good and become a first professional artist you can go to the artclasses.com that's what I usually say in the beginning but I still got email from people asking me where is your website so uh, I guess I'm not making it very clear character design 101 and also below here you can have a, you can click on here you're gonna see student review and then you can check student artwork which uh, there are some new artwork that I just post here that uh, my student just do did and um, that's also the improvement that say you know week 5 to week 15 or week 1 week 6 week 6 and 
all that stuff so just go to this and then you can just click there and you can go watch the video and just and the video will explain to you how it works and then uh, also you can like watch this diagram here like you uh, how the class work is you just go register then you get an email then you get to watch the video and then um, after you've done the homework every week then you will get to do the live class with me and also you can go to you can also download a longer premium tutorial from my website directly or you can go to Gumroad uh, which is you know uh, Gumroad just click on the link on the top right then you'll find Gumroad all right guys all right guys pin over time so this one is uh, an artwork from my patreon community uh, is one of my patrons so uh, if you are my pa pat pa patron on patreon um, I don't speak English well as you can tell um, you can post your artwork and I will randomly select them each week and pin over so um, nice portrait uh, and good hair color I like the blue um, this one could benefit from a couple of things to start off with and you will uh, get a better result I think well so first of all I wouldn't paint on white this is 99 to 100 um, you could paint on white and some people do but uh, you, you are pretty good and you can make a you know pretty good judgment on the value then paint on white go for it but you know I don't paint that well and my skill is pretty limited so usually I will paint on 80% because white if you paint on white or paint on black it's you paint on the extreme value and um, sometimes it make your judgment a little not like a little off not a little off you could like this you know distort your judgment because um, you are probably gonna make this white way too white for the eyes and the white might not be um, as white when you want to pop something up because your background is super white so let's just say if you want to make something bright you gotta make the surrounding darker so light wouldn't exist without the dark so I wouldn't use any extreme value in the background most of the time if I'm painting I'm gonna use anything in between that and if just I'm just gonna paint anything pretty simple like this then I'll use about 80 percent uh, background that just to kind of start off with and a lot of time you see a bunch of people do some fancy color in the background um, it's cool and all um, you can also do that but sometimes it could also cloud your judgment um, or uh, covering up some of the things that um, they I mean if you have a lot of busy stuff in the background it could hurt it could help and it could also hurt your um, painting uh, a lot of time if you see it a lot of time it's pretty hard to tell if the anatomy or anything is correct so that's one thing um, second thing is there's too many color uh, some of them pull it off well some of them you know just I don't know uh, but I would use plain background and you if you look at a lot of uh, master uh, painting a lot of time um, you know if you look at John Singer Sargent and the Zorn or um, a lot of but for the purpose of getting better um, just keep your background simple so you can tell you know which part of it is uh, it can easy easily tell if anything is off your proportion is off or anything like that and a lot of time if you're doing character design um, you will have a pretty simple background um, if you look at a bunch of like model sheet from either Bungie or uh, Overwatch from Blizzard you see that the background is very simple they don't have a lot of fancy color uh, those are for shows or just for the hell of it you know if some people paint and most of the time it will look good because you're covering up with a bunch of stuff and a lot of time it will look bad but um, if you seriously want to like paint and learn how to paint uh, keep it simple and keep the readability um, good so basically what I'm saying is keep it boring <laughs> just kidding no but if you look at the you know model sheet or anything that 
um, official video game company put out, the background will usually be either uh, gray or it could be white sometimes. The reason sometimes it's white because they probably start off painting out with gray. That's what I usually do if I'm designing a character. I start out with gray, but then I have the white background um, because when you are printing it out, uh, if you have gray in the background, it will waste the ink on a printer. So sometimes you see the white background. Not necessarily that they'll paint begin with white, but they probably paint begin with some kind of light gray or something like that. But this, uh, so I'm just explaining that the background will help you deciding. So now you can already tell like the eyes pop. Just notice the eyes, right? The white pop out a little more. One thing. So now I'm right at the some extent. So um, next, you could benefit a lot more from directional lighting or even a default light. Basically, usually I will start with a default, and I don't do a lot of fancy lighting. I mean, I do sometimes from time to time, but I default is the way to go. A lot of um, motor sheet or character design sheet or character concept they are pretty boring and a lot of good portrait are really boring <laughs> um, they're not boring they're good uh, the reason because they just want you to focus on what is going on here rather than um, trying to do fancy stuff to get your attention it's a real learn, learn, learning stuff you know not uh, not trying to teach you any fancy trick or dancing around like monkeys um, anyways Okay, so just so over here, I can see your lighting is coming. Well, basically, here you have the lighting over here, so it's a little confusing. Uh, let me. It's early in the morning, so I don't really know how to speak. And I screwed up my shoulder yesterday working out, so I couldn't move really well. So this might be a little longer. I'm like super stiff and it hurt to move, but that's okay. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. That little shoulder muscle pull would not stop me from if I want to draw, I'll punch it. Um, uh, yeah, punch your pain. Um, so in here, your light is kind of strongly there. If your light is coming stronger over here, and this whole thing, think of it as a whole, you know, overall scheme. It's not just separating piece it's going to hit on the light piece so basically you have like a sphere you have cylinder and then you have basically some sort of a plane and then there 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 so the light will hit the whole thing it's not hitting everything separately right so you're not having a separate piece of this ball so it's uh, your idea is to get the overall piece together um, so when the light hit it will basically hit here and if you have the light here it should expand to here to here to here is distributed evenly throughout and throughout the process if you have the plane that facing different direction the light will travel through and go down you know see this will be have a shadow but if it's smooth then the light will gradually come out smoothly if it's on the same plane then it's just gonna be uh, gradually changing in value then abrupt change of plane happen. Then when the change of plane happens, your value change. And then here smooth again. So as it goes out over to the side, this probably will be, I wouldn't say the lightest, but it should be the lightest part, unless this one protruding really high, then this part probably on this angle will be the lightest, right? So the light will travel usually in if well if it's a circular shape it will distribute it evenly here right if you stretch it out it will distribute it in line more and if it's a cylinder then it's actually a straight line so everything is a geometry shape um, stretch it out here right and the light will you might have a cast shadow here but the light will naturally falling over here and then go up a little bit here and then come down a little bit here but then this would probably be 
uh, some sort of I don't you have like a cl clothing or something depends on what surface it is then it's gonna travel along that line so it's not gonna be a line but it's just gonna evenly distribute it think of it like a heat map you know you could like turn your part of your brain part of your brain become the heat map and then you're gonna be able to paint well so all right so that's the basic idea I'm gonna turn this to overlay so you can understand basically what I'm talking about maybe turn it down a bit but it will be um, it, you can see it a lot more it's a lot clearer if, if there isn't any light here but that's a basic idea so you're trying to get this thing to distribute it well, evenly all right let's get started the more I talk the more it's gonna confuse you so we start with that see it already looks slightly better you don't need to do fancy trick you don't need to jump around in your video and or putting too many colors in it just think of it logically you want to improve you gotta you know uh, go find something that well but sometimes you gotta do things for fun too so you just experiment with whatever color you want okay let's uh, get started all right so first well we are I already explain all that so I am going to make the value on the face kind of simpler closer together so I'm just gonna get first I'm gonna get a palette maybe make it three value and they're not that far apart so this one's 73 and then 84 so mid light and dark so I just pick mid light and dark from your uh, palette and if you are a beginner don't make it too light because if you go too light it will be harder for you to paint or gauging so about 80 um, about 70 to 90 would be percent brightness would be good so start to stay together and if you see I'm um, closing uh, the value gap and kind of make it closer together and now I'm reestablishing this plane that are facing down and uh, on the red the top lip will be darker than the lower one usually um, so now I'm just gonna pick the value dark mid and light and you see the value of really like a lot of time uh, a lot of you got a lot of people especially beginner make a lot of mistake by uh, using well the value you're using too far apart um, little value goes a long way 10% it's a pretty good amount if you split them apart and I know there are rules of like you know painting from you know halfway to black uh, and those are for the full spectrum right and those are like the angle that are 90 degree or more um, and on the facial structure it's not actually 90 degrees so you can use a lot less than that value uh, but the rule of thumb is like you know you want to find a shadow you go halfway to black and that's a that's a 90 degree from whatever it is so you have to look at the angle and the plane and um, you go on Gumroad I have those video explain to you how to pick the the value that would be right for you especially if you paint figure and all that so now I'm establishing plane you see the front plane the bottom part of the face the side plane and the, the jawline plane and then you know the plane that facing different direction and I'm gradually moving the light which is uh, I explained earlier where the light would hit right so it's like a little off the middle to the right side of the screen so now and try to be consistent with your light so now I'm just gonna pick the palette uh, for the hair uh, I actually might have to go darker in the end because uh, some hair are different than skin um, in terms of material and how it um, react to the light so because hair are if you look at it they are a bunch of uh, silent small cylinder tube or a bunch of hair a bunch of fur a bunch of um, translucent object that comes together so usually they are more um, reflective to the light but the darker the hair um, the more contrast it will be but the darker the hair also um, the less 
well variation of the value that you have it's kind of like if you have a blonde hair just think of it as you paint a, a lighter metal uh, but you have a darker hair that's mean you're painting a, a darker uh, or you know a brown metal ball uh, similar not exactly the same but you see that the highlight on the hair is usually stronger than the highlight on the face um, so but that's uh, beside the point just kind of trying to fill in on how to kind of paint the hair and try to keep it simple you know don't don't try to paint the whole hair like if you look at the hair that I just paint right now is basically I just use three value one light uh, and the side of the face is a little darker and actually as it goes downward uh, if it's facing downward 45 degree then it's gonna be the darkest one and then on the other side it will have another value so basically just think of it in terms of okay what kind of geometry you did you you are dealing with first um, before you start applying material so um, actually in the beginning I'll try to find a form and that's the most important thing you can like if you're not very good with color yet because sometimes color would confuse you you could um, go with just black and white or um, grayscale not or oh, black and white grayscale is the same thing or monochromatic that's what I'm saying so now I'm trying to gradually um, painting the skin here and you are probably wondering why uh, is the top of the shoulder right behind the collarbone is darker so I'm gonna quickly explain it to you why all right now I have to paint the screen so basically if the light well like I explained earlier the light hit here right so the light is not hitting on top if the light is hitting on top then this would be lighter so um, the lights kind of front a little off to here so it is basically here so the high the brightest part will be around here right as it come down so well this has to be contour a little bit and these are on different plane and that's why a lot of time you see a lot of portrait painting um, you see oh that part is dark just go look at you know the sergeant or something depends on the direction of the light if you see it is lighter here then they usually go darker there because this one's facing well a little bit to the front but it's also curved right so you have a little lighter and collarbone usually will hit the light because you have another curve on top but this plane is facing directly to the light source so this plane will be lighter than that plane there so don't get too confused um, and ultimately everything depends on the lighting direction all right now let's move on so well maybe let's go a little too far there all right <laughs> I think when I put the screen on it's uh, just keep going um, and I have to do the voiceover because um, I can't really talk and paint at the same time at this moment I just pull the muscle on my shoulder it's really hard for me to paint already and um, but I can still paint it's fine it's always happen uh, if you're exercising but exercising is better than not doing anything you can always fix them I probably have to go and stretch at some point <laughs> um all right so now uh, I feel in the eye socket which you know have a darker usually when I paint the portrait, I would go for the eye socket, bottom of the nose, upper lips, underneath the lower lips. That would be my go-to spot for the darkest part of the surface. And then um, I would start to get the side of the face, especially the lower part uh, on the, you know, right below the cheekbones. And that slope is going to slope down. So as you can see right there, right? So these are the plane that you should, uh, well, let me pause here. Uh, okay so these planes these are all the one that I go for first right it's facing pretty much downward and then the secondary plane which is this and this so that's will be the value that usually this if this is the darkest of all the big plane right we don't count the small plane or um, occlusion shadow yet uh, this will be the second so if this one's darker uh, this will be light light well this 
kind of almost equal to that. Not really, because this one is on a different plane, so it would be lighter. So let's take that one out. That is a different one, because this uh, kind of slope this way, and sometimes it's smoother. And this, you have a harder edge on that, and this will be a softer edge. Um, but I didn't find those plane first, uh, right? Eye socket, bottom of the nose, upper lips, lower, and then on the side. All right. So now I'm just trying to get the shape and once you get the shape when you um, paint try not to render <laughs> or if it is on the same plane just put the solid color in there um, rendering happen only when the transition of the plane happen like if you have a smoother surface and uh, like what I'm trying to do right now is transition from you know the side of the nose to the plane and maybe on top of the eyebrows to the other value so when you transition the value that's when the rendering happen if the value stays still or if it's on the one plane and the plane is uh, is a big plane then don't try to do anything in that because you're gonna get it muddy so be consistent and right now I'm attempting to um, get the blue eyebrows in there and I was like no that's not a very good idea so because I mean you could possibly get the blue eyebrow in there but it's not gonna be 10 or 20 minutes to paint right because you have to figure out the overall look so I just go with the typical one because I only have 30 minutes and if I make a mistake then it's gonna take me longer and I don't have that much time so um, this is just gonna be 30 minutes over paint so I just keep it simple um, like a lot of time a painting you know there's a set of rule that you, you do and you follow those set of rules you know those rules and you follow them it's pretty logic and it should be pretty easy but when you attempt to do something new um, then usually gonna take, take longer so like let's just say hey uh, let's do different kind of hair uh, let's designing a uh, creature that look like human a uh, creature by itself is not that hard I mean just follow the you know um, maybe based on one type of animal and it, it if you make a mistake it won't look that bad but a lot of time you make a mistake on face it will look bad because um, you get used to see human being and if it look somehow resemble human being but you trying to make it a creature that look like human being but also make it a female and it doesn't look pretty then it's a lot harder to pull off so if you if it will be easier to make a male if you kind of want to make some sort of like a, a alien creature because you know um, it it will be easier to not make it because every time you get a female form in something you always try and look for the prettiness of it or, or something for some reason it's just human instinct um, alright so now I'm painting the brown eyebrows instead and and as you can see in the beginning I'll just put the flat value on it which is kinda dark brown and then I add a darker value on like the part that I think will be darker or where the hair will cluster together more right so now I'm adding the eyelash and uh, at this part in particular it depends on what you like or what kind of shape and um, the better the drawer you are and the more precision you have you will uh, you can make it look better or however you think it's pretty because pretty is in the eyes of the beholder right uh, what it thinks pretty might not um, make you think the same way but uh, in this part you kind of make it uh, it has to be well when you're making portrait basically pre precision is very important proportion of the eyes and usually uh, the space in between the eyes equal uh, one eye width so that's a typical uh, measurement and the eyebrows the you know the the distance between the eyebrows to the eyes it totally depends um, some facial feature has the eyebrows kind of higher up or uh, longer uh, space in between the eyelid and the eyebrows right so in this one I kind of like them closer a little bit uh, I don't like to leave them out too far uh, because I like them look a little angry <laughs> Um, 
All right, so now the nostril. And again, the nostril, the height. Usually on the tip of the nose, you have a harder edge all around. Um, but the hardest edge is around the tip of your nose. If you touch your nose and go all the way to the side of the face, you see that the plane changes abruptly and it's kind of curled inside, right? So that's why you get the harder edges on there. But uh, as it goes up to the tip of your nose, then the plane become a little uh, smoother, but you still have the harder edge than comparing it to the middle of the nose or your nose bridge. Those planes are a lot smoother. You kind of, uh, you know, glide your fingers over from your top of your nose bridge to the side of your face is smoother but on the tip of your nose it doesn't it has hard edge so that's why you apply the hard edge there also lips will be a hard edge and again lips some people like them small tiny little i don't know lips super thin and super small super anime and some anime doesn't have any lips at all so but it's okay some of them look cute so again depends on how you want to Paint it. You can paint it with lip. You can paint it without lips. Um, as long as you like what you do and you know it, it look proportionate, then it's fine. And sometimes it doesn't have to even be like a real proportion. Um, if you look at Pixar anime or Disney anime, um, but the the way that they do it, they know exactly what they are doing. They just use the proportion of of uh, baby's face. So uh, and just moving stuff here and there but if you want to get good at painting portraits stick with um, the real measurement for the beginning and then as you go you can kind of you just have to have a center right um, some kind of uh, standard that you go for and then you can move a little bit left a little bit right a little bit up a little bit down so once you have a center and you know okay with the center if it looks good in wherever you comfortable with your zone and then you can when you're doing stylized you can also do stylized and make it look good but it's gonna take uh, some practice to get to use used to a certain style because everything is different or some people just you know having their own style and just paint in that particular style forever and it looks good so it doesn't really matter it depends on you know if but if it's your job um, and you have to design a character you probably be better off um, able to like diversify or um, sort of have more range of style so you can go from realistic to stylized uh, that would be benefit more because you you know you can get more clients and uh, people look at your stuff and they'll be like oh yeah this guy can do a bunch more stuff so let's do that but you know it doesn't matter i mean it the painting technique is basically the same as long as you know plain and you know how to utilize your value and you know how to how the light react to the object and how to arrange your painting and color theory and all that and you'd be able to apply them you'll be fine um, all right so now uh, you notice the plane on the further side uh, I'm trying to make it slightly darker since um, when I explained to you like the lighting will gradually uh, kind of get darker as it go away from the light source right so away from the highlight basically um, and so it's kind of it's gonna have like a gradual change of value there all right so now we got the base basically now I'm just gonna simplify the hair a little bit more I'm not sure how much time we're gonna have just gonna make it simple all right and usually I just use uh, 90 to 100 percent opacity uh, the reason I use 90 sometimes uh, because well I have uh, pen pressure sensitive so because I want the background color to kind of mix in with the color I'm using a little bit but not too much I just want to get that so if I use the blue and paint over the skin uh, I want the color of the skin to get under um, the paint a little uh, so it you know because all the color has to mix together a little sort of like the light and it reminds you of a, more of a traditional painting. Um, all right, I'm just gonna try to add some uh, edges to the hair to make it look more like hair-like, so it's not too stiff and not too geometry. And I think since I flip here, I can see that um, the back of the head's a little too wide. I'm gonna shorten that a little bit, thin it out. 
fix the proportion so when you flip usually you can fix the proportion and if you're doing it traditionally you can flip it upside down or look in the mirror because in reality you can't really flip it right so you have to kind of go into the mirror or have a mirror around you just show it to the mirror and you're like oh there's something need to be fixed or flip it upside down um, all right and now and also when you flip it's a little tricky because sometimes you forget where the lights coming from and right now the, the right is now coming from the left side of the screen and I'm just I zoom out so that I can see the overall uh, shape and overall lighting and then I'll zoom back in again when I try to uh, get more accuracy on the shape of um, each element on the face so you can see and when you zoom out you can see right away where the light source is actually right if you look at the face and the hair you're like oh okay now I see where it is that has the lightest part so right around the forehead and coming down to the front a little bit so you have to be consistent with the light like I explained earlier and limit your value a little and if you want to know more, you can always take class with me on the website. Just go there and take, you know, mentorship and stuff. And you can also, you know, um, download a longer tutorial and it will show you what. Um, usually the beginner's package, I kind of compact that in the side from whatever I learned uh, from class and from, you know, um, other artists. And then I just kind of, okay, this is maybe what you need to get start you know from chapter 1 to now I think chapter 14 uh, the next release on patreon will be chapter 15 not sure what I'm doing yet but there's a bunch of people requesting hand so I might do a tutorial on hand uh, probably this weekend sometime so now I'm doing a harder edge on the tip of the nose on the side right and then um, on that side a little bit and you see sometimes I just like flipping um, or turning on and off so that I can like look at the previous or whatever that you paint and I'm trying to put it on the same position um, so that I'm not like totally painting something entirely new um, make sure that it fit right in alright and now I'm painting the it's like on your lower lid uh, lower eyelid you will have a little shadow so and then your lower eyelid also has the skin from inside your eye that facing up and sometimes you see uh, the light hit that spot it's right after your lower eyelash you see some highlight there and sometimes when you look at the painting or the photograph you will see some people paint that spot also and now upper eyelash so see I'm just slowly adding um, now kind of like not occlusion shadow but the darker the darkest area so now I'm trying to wrap it up so I'm trying to find a dark spot and now make another layer underneath I usually paint the, the darker area or the eyelash on the top layer so now I'm making a new layer in between and I pick um, the color for the eyes usually I'll pick the skin color and desaturate it and lighten it up a little bit and then um, if it's not if it's not light enough then I'll move the scale to a bit lighter and when you picking the lighter color um, most of the time I'll pick uh, I'll move the hue scale toward the blue also a little bit and the saturation will be less so anything that's lighter will be less saturated and will go toward blue um, anything that will go darker will be more saturated and it will go, go toward warm so because uh, on the daylight normally uh, your sky is blue and your light is basically a cool light so that's the majority of the time um, with uh, sometimes you get the warm light but that's um, maybe 30 to 20 percent of the time you get the warm light uh, in the certain situation like in the morning or in the evening uh, and that's a short range of time right or sometimes you get from the fire or something so I'm adding the iris and when you're adding the iris I just put the flat, flat color there and make sure that it looks at the same direction um, usually at this point I can just leave it because I don't um, 
a lot of people like to paint eyes and making them look I don't know glowy pretty I just like keep it simple and that's just me because um, there are other things to focus on and most of the time I do a lot of characters so um, I don't focus on the face as much um, I mean it's only when I paint portrait right so a lot of time people you know when you're trying to paint you're gonna paint portrait just paint portrait right and then just focus on a portrait don't paint any other thing because you're gonna be spend if you know you're going to be spending a lot of time on face then just stick to portrait and just leave the rest of the body but if you're going to do the whole body then you're going to have to focus on the whole body and the whole design and not just focusing on the face and paint the face more than the rest of the area uh, you know what i mean so um so i like to just you know make it sort of distribute everything kind of evenly throughout and i was trying to make the eye lighter and you know uh, on the bottom but then i kind of changed my mind because it looked a little too I don't know too light so I just tone that down and make it a little more subtle like I said I don't like to paint eyes that much I mean I do but um, well it's I probably paint way too many of them and I don't want to paint any more of those eyes I just want to paint something else or like the whole thing um, now we're gonna add some uh, lighter element and eyes takes a lot of time because if you mess it up um, by just a little bit then you can totally see because the first thing you look uh, on to a portrait you might not notice but the first thing you look is the eye and you just look at the eyes and you're just like oh and um, the reason that if it's by off by just a little bit you notice and then the rest of your effort just like gone <laughs> I mean that spent the whole time painting your face and your eye just fucked up a little bit and then it's gone all right so now and the light um the highlight of the eyes looking at the direction of the you know the sphere that you set up in the beginning and it has to be on the same direction and your eyes have another um on top of your iris or what do you call that a, a, some sort of a, a colon or something on top of your iris you have another layers of uh, sphere or sort of like a curve uh, on top surface so it, it make that highlight become uh, even smaller because of another uh, sphere on top of your um, iris so and now I'm adding highlight and occlusion shadow and that's pretty much it a little bit of occlusion shadow on the corner and maybe add a little bit of eyelash on the bottom all right guys well thank you for watching I hope this video is helpful um, and this is all the time I have today and hopefully uh, I'll do live stream next Friday so if you guys are interested you can come join usually there are a lot of people and on the regular day I'll be on Twitch but on Friday I'll be on YouTube depends I don't want to go on YouTube too much because you know it's like if you subscribe then it ping everybody and I have tons of subscribers so I don't want to ping everybody every day um, anyways if you want to see the live stream make sure you click the uh, bell icon below then every time I go live you will get the notification and you will um, be able to watch me paint live um, but if you really interested in watching me doing live stream and just you know do that and uh, you can also go take class at theartclasses.com all the links are below the video or you can click it on that um, what do you call cards on the top right hand side uh, to have a destination to go from place to place all right so um, I'm gonna clean up a little bit there and this is it is it all right, I gotta go. So I think we're just gonna stop here, cleaning up the nose a little bit there. All right, guys, have a good rest of the day. Bye bye.